The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan and Johnny Kennedy. In this week's podcast, we look ahead to some of the year's Irish sporting events. We touch on Gaelic football, boxing, women in sport, New York's Connacht Championship game versus Sligo in April, and Johnny gives us a deep dive into the professional golfing scene, as well as an insight into touring with Shane Lowry last year. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at The Long Haul Podcast, while all of our previous podcasts are up on thelonghaulpodcast.com, where we also have a number of news stories on the site. Thelonghaulpodcast.com is where you'll find our big interview with Graham Garrity and our previous episode comparing how Ireland and New York dealt with the Omicron surge and the outlook for the New York City bar industry over the coming months. All of our podcasts can be watched on YouTube. We started off the podcast by discussing Katie Taylor's upcoming clash versus Amanda Serrano in Madison Square Garden on April the 30th, which has been touted as the biggest boxing fight in women's history. They've been trying to get at that. Uh, they've been trying to get that together for the last couple of years. You think this will be Katie's last fight against her? Uh, no, I think Katie wants wants. To, there's wants a couple to of other ones out there that she wants. To, yeah. that she can move move weight slightly, but uh, I listened to one of the sports shows this morning in Ireland. Mm. That was one of the girls' predictions she, that she'll pack up. Well, she didn't have anything to base it on. She was just yeah. they were asking for your surprise of the year, and she oh, yeah. the surprise she picked was that uh, they were doing the surprises in all the sports and their predictions in golf and rugby and everything. Yeah. And she just predicted that Katie could walk away from this. I I don't know, but I don't think Katie... It doesn't sound like Katie, she would. Why would she's she? not the kind of person like the Eric yeah. Cantona that will, uh, I'm at the top and I'm going to leave. Yeah, it's yeah. like she'll keep our... She'll try and adjust. But I think boxing uh, needs her to stay. Yeah, 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 don't yeah, they? Yeah. Like she's yeah, kind yeah, of flying yeah, the flag yeah, for yeah, women's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she is. Oh, she, she is, but I think um, women's sports in general is flying. Isn't it? We were just talking yeah. about Graham Garrity and their Demid ladies footballers. Yeah, like yeah. Women's football, women's everything is just... Yeah, Leona Maguire, all these Yeah, no, it, it is true. It's fantastic, but I'd like... I would like to see Katie fight Serrano maybe two or three years ago because yeah. Katie's 35 now and uh, I don't know uh, Gavin who writes for the 42 was on with us there a couple of weeks ago Gavin thinks that she's kind of slowing down and she doesn't have a, like a knockout punch where she she has to go the, the distance with a, with a competitor okay. like. and uh, as you get older of course you're going to be slowing down but she wasn't convincing in December but maybe I don't know I'd like. Hopefully, she she can do the job against Serrano. He she's involved with uh, Jake. Pa- so Jake Paul, you know the YouTube yeah, yeah. guy. Like yeah, she, yeah. he's training with her. He's giving her fierce publicity. So yeah. we could see him on the card as well. Could be could be really interesting. Like them things are great for New York. Yeah. Like Conor yeah, McGregor, yeah, yeah, fight, yeah. Conor McGregor fighting in Madison Square yeah. Garden. As I said to you, on the last one. So that was yeah. one of our best weeks here. Oh yeah. Just with the buzz with people yeah. around, it was amazing. It was the same week Jeff finished off the 100 points of Guinness. So that was <laughs> between that and Conor McGregor, it was a big thing. I think it'd be a big year for sport for Irish people. Like, you know, it just feels like, well, obviously, I'm a big golf fan. Yeah, give us an insight. Uh, we never yeah. got this in the last uh, we, we do I don't have podcast on this. Ah, come on, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think even, like, never what's mind. The, like, what's even the. What's the, the uh, you don't follow wrestling now, but uh, Brock Lesnar would have Paul Heyman. and he's the advocate. You don't watch wrestling. The no. advocate for Brock Lesnar. So Michael, I, nobody I, watches wrestling. I, I don't either, but I used to. I well, I used to. I keep an eye on it. But uh, there was a photo of you there with, in the background with, uh, with, uh, with Shane O'Reilly, one of the one of the trip, one of the competitions there this year, and you've got the, the glasses on, and you were just. Kind of, oh, that was the, like, U- the It's US like Open. as if you're telling. Uh, yeah, that probably had a big influence on him because he didn't win anything this year. Yeah, right? that's so a good. <laughs> we had great crack, but we had great crack. Well, we didn't have any weekends off. That was my that was my claim to fame. All the tournaments I went to, we only missed one cut. We missed uh, the cut in Mexico, but uh, I think that was kind of a, a hangover from. Uh, so you got a round, all right, didn't you? Yeah, that was a, a Ryder Cup thing. The Ryder Cup is so big for a European yeah. player in his career. It's like I don't know how to compare it to other sports, but it becomes such a pinnacle in their career to try to get everyone says winning the major is obviously it is but they don't have any other team opportunity so i think for shane personally to get onto the Ryder cup team yeah it then the the fall off after it is the the lull after it mm. like every shot he hit before september if he was on the cut line he was trying to make the cut because yeah. it was Ryder cup points Ryder cup points you remove that Ryder cup points from it and you're yeah. in mexico playing in front of no people no crowd and you're down there you're probably half questioning why am I here and he probably couldn't wait for Christmas but then he spent it in Ireland and he probably couldn't wait to get out of there either but <laughs> I just think it'd be a huge year for all of them I'd fancy Shane to do well in the majors like he'd done well in all the majors before like and 
he could fly under the radar at Augusta because he done very well in Augusta last year. People okay. don't see it as that. Like, like people don't. The problem with Ireland and golf is, and I'm not giving away any secret here, or this is not his opinion, it's my opinion. We've been spoiled in Ireland as regards golf. Since 07, like, we've had, like, what, seven, ten major winners, I think, you know? Like, Porrick is three, Rory is four, like, and then mm. Shane, Graham, and Darren Clark. Like, for a country of our yeah, size, yeah, to have yeah. all yeah. the major. Now, all of a sudden, if you don't win a major, gosh, you're, you're crap-like. Yeah. Like, Seamus Power is, like, doing amazing things now. But because he's, Seamus went to college here, spent most of his time here. You were saying that where did he go to college? I'm not yeah. sure where he did. He, he was Tennessee, I think. He was, okay. he was East Tennessee, maybe, or something. I, mean, I could be totally wrong on that, boy. So, like, did he go down a different route to other golfers? Well, you see, a lot of the lads spend, they go to the right, or, or they, they go to college in the States. Like, Graham McDowell, all these lads. A lot of them, like, Shane and Rory and them didn't. But, like, they would have went to, like, Shane would have went to UCD for a year or so doing and col- yeah. playing golf there. Rory went straight in. He was, like, at the level he was at. But Seamus Power stayed here, like, so he played college here, and he just basically set his time here because the, the general route used to be years ago go to go to america get your to uh, do your college come back and get on the european tour try go a couple of years there if you're good enough then go to america seamus did the right way in my opinion because he's st- it's it's so different now but seamus stayed in america <clears throat> seamus and dungarvan and waterford and he won he won this year so that's why he's playing this week say in hawaii but he is very much determined to get into the top 50 in the world. And that opens so many doors for him. Like, if he finishes in the top three this week, he gets into Augusta. Like, that's amazing mm. for someone of his level. Yeah. But again, okay. Seamus Power wins a, a, a PGA Tour event this year. If that had been pre-07, if Porrick Harrington or Paul McGinley or Darren Clark or something won on the PGA Tour, they'd, be, look, they'd nearly have an open-top bus in Ireland for them. Like, Seamus Power wins it. There was a little bit of hullabaloo yeah. about it, but nothing major. There was something else happened that weekend in Ireland and it nearly made bigger news or something like that. So I think for him, I think it's going to be a huge year for Seamus because he's so determined to get in top 50. Good Corkman Simon is on his uh, yeah. bag as well. Like They're a great team together. And then obviously poor El Rory is obviously going to be always like, the Masters is coming up. He needs that for the Grand Slam and blah, blah, blah and all that. Like, and you're as good as Rory McIlroy. You could win any time you want. But yeah. he's the most scrutinised golfer since Tiger Woods. Like I've never, like, you can't do that right. But Yeah, is he kind of someone that, uh, like, when he was winning his major, said we were thinking, oh, this is going to be, he's going, to, get, like, he's got, he's going to win half a dozen, a dozen majors. Yeah. And, like, should he have? Oh, totally. But, like, what should have been sport? Yeah. Like, what's that even mean? But, I, like, I don't know. Has he... Has he underachieved? Yeah. Probably yeah. by his standards. Yeah. But at the same time, he's still only in his early 30s. Yeah. You know, he could win... Like, Vijay Singh has won, what, three or four majors, four majors, or whatever he's won. I think he won his first one out when he was over 35 or something. It's, I think it's because of when he came along. He came after Tiger Woods. All this money was poured into golf. And people were and looking for a new... they needed someone. Yeah. And Rory came along at a time where they needed him. Like, yeah. like DJ, Dustin Johnson shot, like, was it in Hartford in Connecticut two years ago, shot a 79 one day and an 80 the next day. It's not a word about it. Like, mm. <laughs> like it was literally, oh, DJ's just had a bad start there. If Rory had a 79 and an 80, it literally could be. Yeah. The world might stop. Well, I don't know. Rory won a few competitions last year, didn't he? He won at the end of last year. He won yeah. the CJ Cup, I think, in, in Vegas. Yeah. So, and then what happened was, <clears throat> from there then he built on this and then he's in Dubai the race to Dubai final tournament of the year he's in the lead going yeah. into the final round but it's just golf it didn't go his way yeah. and then he famously kind of ripped his shirt at the end and there's this photo of Rory but that just shows you the level of work that these lads put into it like I hear like lads that ask me because I go out with Shane and them to a few tournaments and people are asking me about this and asking me about that these boys man work so hard like they really do and I know every sports yeah. person says that but they've so much downtime that it's it's hard on them. But they're like, like again, not giving away any trade secrets or anything like this. But like, I was in Mexico with Shane, like, and every day, Shane went to the gym straight after around the golf. These lads are like constantly at this thing. Yeah, the strength and condition. They're constantly at it. I remember we went with Shane at a tournament somewhere, and we met Rory coming back through the car park in the tournament, and he was at the he was coming from the gym, and he was at the at the gym doing this, and then that night he was. And Shane says, I'd meet him in Florida. He says, he'd be swimming, he'd be this. They're, they're constantly yeah. doing stuff. And I think that's where the frustration then comes with this ripping of the T-shirt. Because then Rory goes in, he stands in front of the media, and he's asked, like, a stupid question, like, whatever it might be. Of, like, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Like, man, I'm out here bursting my balls yeah, to do yeah. everything. It's not that easy. It's so hard. Like, Johnny Caldwell, right? 
He's a guy from the north of Ireland. He won a tournament this year in Europe. He won one of the big ones. There's not a word about it. Like, yeah. you mentioned there about how well all the girls did this year. Amazing. Sports mm. Personality of the Year in Ireland this year. Had all the girls on it and stuff mm. like that. Johnny Caldwell didn't even get a mention. Mm. Rory McIlroy won tournaments yeah. and whatever. Never even got a yeah. mention. Oh, we were actually, Le- Leona yeah. Maguire, amazing year. Yeah. And it's brilliant what she did. And I'm, like, I think it's, I'm not knocking yeah. what she did. Leona Maguire never won a tournament, but she, yet she was up for Sports Person of the Year type yeah. of thing. Which I think is fine, and I'm all I'm all for it. But I'm sure like Leona has bigger expectations as yeah. well, which she did. But like that week at the Solheim Cup was just second to none. It was amazing yeah. what she done, and from where she came from. But for people from Ireland to follow golf, it's not a big shock. Like Leona McGuire was like world number one amateur for like three or four years or something. Like mm. she's an amazing golfer. That's that's a level that Rory was never even at. Like you know, I just feel that sometimes it's just. Unless the lads are winning a green jacket and a couple of majors, yeah. they barely get a they barely get a mention. Like. Talking about women's sport, and before I came here, I kind of I didn't have time. But horse racing used to be one of my. I used to, I, horse racing was my main sport. I loved horse racing, jumps racing. What Rachel Blackmore has achieved unreal. is unbelievable. And like it's, it's like in a way, it's it's like having a, if we're watching Man United and a girl is playing on the Man United team because she is actually sure. racing against other men. Yeah, she's she's got the strength. She's holding a yeah. uh, holding a horse. She's got that strength as well. You by looking at her, you wouldn't think that yeah. she's that strong. And she's just she's the best jump race sure. jockey. Her in own the, line in, in straight world. after yeah. it said it best. Like she says, I don't feel like a female or a male right now. Yeah. I'm just in another world. Like what she did. But you are right. Like yeah. what she did in the level, the competition she oh, did yeah, it in yeah. is it's not a gender thing or anything. Yeah. I just feel in certain sports in Ireland we we have our expectations too high. Yeah, in certain yeah, yeah, I get just, like we're pissed off if Ireland's not beating New Zealand a couple of times in a year. Okay, not the New Zealand part, but yeah. like we're pissed off. Like like we're such a small nation. Yeah. We're punching above our weight in everything. <laughs> just a little bit of an expectation thing. It would be. I just think we're harder on our own. Like in certain yeah. things, if you don't win a major in a golf like you're going uh, you know? does, um, does Rory or not no, Rory Shane but when you're going to competition does I know Shane has his caddy or whatever but does he have a, a kind of a team around him going just around me. just to just, just me <laughs> <laughs> Grogan is there the eye time is there yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah 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 no, he would like they very much do. They have a like, like he'd have a social, uh, yeah. He he'd like a, he has Neil Manship who runs Golf Ireland basically out of Minute. Okay, they're a big and Neil's a Neil's a great guy, Scottish fella, great golfer in his own right. Um, and then he'd have um, Robbie Cannon would be his strength and condition guy. He's been with him for a few years. Yeah. Equally, a very good golfer. He likes to claim he won a couple of majors himself, but there's the Irish majors. I don't know what he's talking. About. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Stephen Sweeney, who's a putting coach. Who's from Donegal and who's based in uh, based in Florida as well? Works with a lot of the top pros. And would be on tour and would just he would basically wherever Shane plays, he's there. Like the likes of Stephen okay. and them lads, they did they work pretty hard at what they do. As in, yeah. uh, so like if someone like Stephen there was had like three or four golfers, like he has to be where his golfer is. Like so, let's yeah. say Shane says, "Oh well, I'm off for two weeks." The other guy might be on for them two weeks. Yeah. So Stephen would be traveling the whole time. So, yeah, it would be generally on a week-to-week basis. It would be Shane's coach obviously isn't there all the time. Like a lot of the players, their coaches are not always with them. Okay. And then um, COVID obviously made it very difficult for them, hence why I was able to sneak into a lot of the stuff because yeah. the lads weren't around. But you, you, it generally, they, it's, a, it's a lonely world, like. It's a lonely yeah. world that they travel, like. Cause, you know, we turn on the golf. If you're a golf fan, we turn it on a Thursday. We look at them playing in these amazing places, and we're all like, this is amazing. Finishes at six o'clock. We turn off the TV. We don't turn it back on to three o'clock next day to watch it. Yeah. You could be in a random city in the middle of America, staying in a Marriott hotel that's near the golf course, especially COVID times now. And then it's that night, like, oh, you go for dinner. Where are we going? You get your tea time. And you know, I think one of Shane's friends put it best to me without naming him. And I said it to him. I said after a few events that I was at, I was like, "Geez, my perception of their lifestyle is not like you know what I thought." Everyone says they have a great lifestyle. And as he said, everyone around them probably has a great lifestyle. But yeah. they make money that allows other people to have a great lifestyle. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean their life is amazing. It's a pretty I, lonely life. I, I was going to say it, but thankfully I didn't, that, they had, that he has a great lifestyle, that they do have a great yeah. lifestyle. No, we yeah, do. Yeah, we yeah, do yeah. But like you look at it this week, the lads are in Hawaii. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. There's a fella in Hawaii there that's probably going to finish down last in the, mm. one of the last few bits. Okay, so he didn't bring his game with him this week. Doesn't yeah. What's it cost him to be there? He's got to fly there. He's got to get there. He's got to bring family there with him, potentially. Let's say he is. He didn't. 
their accommodation isn't necessarily. You know, if you are less, like if you are down, this is why Seamus power. Seamus is pushing to get into the top fifty in the world. But there's the little things, like if Seamus is on a corn ferry tour tournament, he's to, a lot of time they have to make their own way to the course. There's no courtesy car, and I'm you know I'm making it sound like first world problems here, but I'm talking about the cost yeah. factor, the cost factor being there, and then you're halfway through your round. The time of yeah, you're halfway through your round on a Friday, and you're in around the cut line. You missed the cut here. Now you're thinking, yeah. all right. You're already probably in the back of your mind thinking, right, I'm now in the middle of like Alabama. I've got to get a flight to get me to where, to get me to where, to get me to where. On to Chicago to get me to, like if you're, that's why lads based out of Ireland, based out of America, you know, a lot of lads will base themselves in Florida because yeah. a lot of these tournaments in the earlier start of the year are in around the Florida area. You're flying to Georgia, like Augusta, all these places. Shane's in Florida, isn't he? Yeah. A lot of lads are in the Florida, Jupiter kind of area, yeah. And does he, would he have a, like a personal assistant that would plan the weeks ahead for him and plan mm-hmm. where he, like, he's He'd like have training? He'd have a manager. A, a manager. His manager system in, in Dublin, okay. like, yeah. Uh, Brian Moran would be, like, he's, yeah. more, he's one of his, his best mate type of thing, and, but yeah. he's his manager also. But, like, they will, but that's the other thing. They sit down to start of the year, and they have to pick what tournaments they're playing in. Yeah. You have to commit to a certain amount, because you, you have your sponsors, you have to please this play in a certain amount. And then you have to look what suits you. Yeah. And then you don't, certain lads, you don't want to be on the road then maybe three or four weeks in a row. Like, that's mm. tough as well. And it's monotonous. And, and then the problem for the European lads is they have to commit to Europe as well. Like, so to keep your tour yeah, card, I yeah. think you have to play like something six times, maybe, or maybe four or five times. So with Shane, that's pretty easy in a sense because he'll be playing in the Open Championship, he'll be playing in the Irish Open, and then he might play one in the other week at that. And then he'll do his first two or three in Dubai. But while you're in Dubai playing in them tournaments at the start of the year, you're missing out on the start of the race, the, the FedEx Cup here. So it's all relevant. But like it is, it, like I say, I, just where people, are, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough lifestyle that the lads leave. And you're constantly on the road. You're living out of a suitcase. Yeah, lads see the Instagrams uh, and they flew this one and they flew with that one. Listen, that, uh, that's all great crack after a while, isn't it? Like you're still out there trying to pay bills and... You're trying to make money to, you know, to get onto this tour, to get onto this tournament, to get into this and all. There is, um, like every other sport, like the GA, everything has become science, has been, has just, has progressed the last couple of years. Golf as well, you look at McElroy, like strength mm. and conditioning. Yeah. It's, it's, it's after, it's, par, it's part of golf <laughs> now though. It, well, well, a lot, of, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think, like, this, the problem with golf is, it's an individual sport and you're your own boss and you're everything. If you're on the driving range, and you, I, I remember being at one tournament and I'd never seen so many different aids and putting aids and yeah. this aids and one lad come on and he would put these straps on either shoulder to pull the shoulders back and with that then uh, another guy walked up and he had like sideshow bob things on the, he basically put these bubbles on the front of his shoes so he was up on his heels and he was putting you can be sure I was at the side of that Harrington mocking definitely it, tried yeah but <laughs> I was at the side mocking that, but it was Kevin Kissner. it's Kissner who does that, but I guarantee there'd be other players then looking at that and thinking What's he up to there? Yeah. What's that about? Who's your man with him? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's his new physio. What's the story there? And then if they see your man done well, they're, they're, they're all like... It's a Everyone's looking for an edge. Yeah. PGA Tour is probably full I, of a, a load of like borderline narcissists, like serial killers. But, but, but golf is different in a way. Like, like on a football pitch, you need to be fit. You need to be kind of like, you can get away with certain things like of, of not being a total athlete. But Shane's got his own way of playing. Like he doesn't have to be like, he doesn't have to have the physique of... No, I think it just Rory. looks that way type of thing. But the way Shane is built, like, yeah. you know what I mean? He wouldn't be able to play the ability he was if he, like, sort of went down that road of trying to look like yeah. a fucking surfer. Yeah. Because that's the way he's kind that's of... That's what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, part yeah. of his MO. Like, Park, or Colin Montgomery famously lost a lot of weight and Darren Clark all did it years ago. Like, but they were, like, heavy lads, different yeah. type of that. Shane is a lot slimmer and a lot, like, fitter than lads think from TV. But, like, them lads, like, lost all that weight type of thing. They look better, but it mess with our game. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It ends up. It's, it's or Phil Taylor. Well, Phil Taylor did it in the darts. Totally, remember? yeah. Different yeah. with Phil is. Yeah, didn't, <laughs> Phil didn't do any tone, and like Phil was like your granny then there with his <laughs> arm hanging out there with this fucking bag hanging down. That wasn't necessarily a good look for them. But it is. There are so many different aspects that are there, yeah. and there's so much. There's so much money involved in it yeah. as well. You see, it's. It's hard. I have to give a shout out. I, I don't know. Have you heard of him, or would you follow him? But the guy from Cork, Mike Carroll, he's out in California. He he's got a, an app, Fit for Golf. Oh, he's the fitness guy. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen? But I, I know of him through Robbie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Mike uh, w- would have 
um, worked in Fitness Works in Douglas and Cork, where Laura mm. worked, okay. and started there. So I know Mike. He would have played with Douglas, which is mm. uh, Neil. Very Clare. good friends with Kevin Madden. Oh no, that's the guy from Carlo. I'm Mike, I'm sorry, but. Uh, you should follow if everyone wants to just follow fit for golf and Mike, Mike is all it's just the technique and how he's trying to get that extra 2% that, in that the is, swing but oh, he's right the, that the is, videos he puts like up like Robbie has said that to me Shane's finished it. Robbie said there's certain things yeah. you could go to a pro right yeah. and a pro will tell you no you need to do this you yeah. physically might not be able to do that yeah. So you actually have to go to somebody like that yeah. and learn how to that you can do that certain thing. I think he's actually a. I don't think he. I'm not sure about his background in golf was, uh, mm. but uh, he's a scratch golfer now. Yeah. So I think. But a lot of them all, are like. Yeah. A lot. Of, it, it, it's such a big business. Yeah. But I jokingly, tongue in cheek, like say they're all spoofers. But like <laughs> the strength and conditioning guys, it's like it is a whole new yeah. world now, as you know. Like it's a it's a big thing, but. These lads are all looking for an edge. They're yeah. all looking for... And then you get someone like Bryson DeChambeau comes on and he puts on all this weight to hit all this and he says this is kind of working. So if you ever get an opportunity, Power Carrington done a few podcasts like early last year with a few different people and I don't, can't remember which ones he did it with. But he's saying like how a lot of it is BS because Bryson DeChambeau had that club head speed before he ever put the weight on. You know, oh, so yeah. he bigged it up. Now, whether he did that to get in other people's heads... It's pretty smart if he did because it worked. Because Rory famously came out after the Arnold Palmer last year and said, I won't lie, like I've got caught up in the whole, um, I've got caught up in the Bryson distance thing. Okay. Now, when you have someone as talented as Rory McIlroy saying that, that's a bit of an eye opener, you know. But I'm sure there's mm. loads like him, you know. I know mm. Brooks probably similar. Like a lot of these lads do, they look, they're, they're constantly all looking yeah. at each other, even though they let on or they try not to, you know. What are the ones that you're going to be traveling to this year? What comp- No, I haven't decided. This little eight-month-old at home now could be, uh, he could be the issue. <laughs> that little fucker could have, could, might just ruin everything on me. Too young, or, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, 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 I could, or I could just go on it, you know. I know he, well, he, was he born early last year and you were at a competition? Oh, yeah, that wasn't even funny. Well, it kind of was at the time. I was actually on my way back from... Um, actually, the funny thing about that is, like, the joke Shane made was thanking, he was trying to get me to thank him that he hadn't played as well that week, so he we had an early tea time. Um, but we were at the Quail Hollow, which is the Wells Fargo in Charlotte. And uh, yeah, the lads had nearly team time on the Saturday. Shane has a lot of family to live in Charlotte. So we went and met the lads for lunch. The lads dropped me at the airport, and Bo and I were at the airport. And Olivia called me anyway, but our waters were breaking. But it wasn't like the TV show, like, we're, oh, no way, your waters are breaking. This is amazing. Unfortunately for Olivia, like, you know, she didn't really know what was going on because she was two or three weeks early and the panic station hit. So it wasn't a proud moment. And the guilt then of being away was a bit like, oh, my God, I can't believe I've done this. Oh, and that was the competition where Padraig and Shane... No, that, no, I thought, no, I thought that... Me. Well, you see, the point of that was because he came two weeks early, uh-huh. in my head then when she had him, when I got back to New York and we had Jack on the Monday morning, in my head lying in the hospital, I was like... And I say lying in the hospital because I was actually lying in the hospital. I had my own bed. It was great was that uh, I knew the PGA then was four weeks later in, um, in Charleston, South Carolina. So uh, I knew I can con my way into going to this. So for any mothers that are listening to this, they probably think I'm the ultimate scumbag for this. <laughs> but Olivia and I were then in the Westbury over in 38th Street watching the golf. And my brother was there, Cahill was there, all the lads had arranged to be at the PGA that year. And I was sitting there, and it's Olivia's probably first time out, and she's having a glass of wine. And I was looking up at <laughs> the TV, and I was like... <laughs> Jesus, and she was like, I don't know why you just didn't go. I won't go into the whole that's detail. The, that's the worst then when you hear that comment. That well, comment. I won't go into Barbie the whole detail. Within an hour of her making that comment, I was standing in LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> and I was down in Charleston that night having dinner with the lads. And I went on the Sunday, which was amazing because I ended up blagging my way. And I was in the clubhouse with the lads afterwards. But it was, Park Harrington would have been my idol. Like I just so I you were there like, when they did the last round. I thought you'd missed it. No, I got there for the oh, last round. All right, okay. okay. But Olivia did text me that night and said to me, uh, oh. she said the wine wore off, and I realized what have I done? Like? <laughs> but just for an exclusive uh, or just for a bit of gossip here, I made the awful mistake because I met Harrington that day, <clears throat> and I ended up spending in the clubhouse with Harrington and Shane and their families and all, and we watched Phil coming up the last four or five holes, and the whole thing was like. If the lads had got one or two more, like Porrick really, like Porrick bogeyed, I think, about 14 or 15, and it was a downhill hole. He had a sand iron in his hand, second shot. He didn't have made, and Shane ended up birdieing that hole. Like, you give, you, if Shane gives Porrick that birdie, Porrick could have easily got hit, get in on six under, seven under. It would have made Phil's very interesting. The problem with it, without boring people too much with him, 
it's such an amazing golf course like it's uh, <coughs> in um which what's it called a Keo island but like 17 and 18 they're just ridiculously hard holes anyone that remembered the 91 like Ryder cup it was just a beast but the wind was completely changed all right so the last difficult hole was probably 13 or 14 and the last four or five holes were downwind so my point is a park had to get in on time and it would have just made it completely different but the boys ended up hanging around and we watched them but I get to hang out with Boric Harrington now for a couple of hours watching Phil Mickelson coming down, which was one of the more iconic, you know, major wins. Yeah. And I made the mistake of texting Olivia la- that night and saying, today was the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally got a text back. Now, for anyone who doesn't know my missus, my missus is super easy going, obviously. But she texts back and just goes, that's wonderful. And as I read it, I just went, that probably wasn't it. It was that bad of a statement. I didn't even reply. I didn't even bother replying. I just said, you know what, you're just well, put your... It was it four weeks later? It? it was just four weeks after I had my only first child. And I tell her it was the best day of my life because I got to hang out with Porrick Harrington. Well, what it was, was Porrick went downstairs and got me an ice cream. And he came up and he said, Johnny, I got sprinkles on it for you there. And I literally, I got emotional. You know? And that's what it was. Listen, you could have other kids. Like, I mean, this, this is a one-off. But... Uh, <laughs> but no, the point I wanted to make just I just thought of it there a second ago like you know they're talking about fitness and all because that, that week is a prime example if anyone that watched it or remembered watching Shane playing in, in that week so if you have a tea time so you get to draw at the start of the week and you get a, like late say say a late early or an early late like you know what I mean when I say early late means early on the Thursday late on the Friday so that means you're up super early Thursday morning then you're off all Thursday afternoon. Then you're off Friday morning and you're a late tea time on the Friday. That's tough. Like, that's long. Now, the other way is not much better either, where you could have a late and an early. So you'd have a late tea time Thursday. But if you look and you see a guy's tea time on the PGA Tour and he's teeing off at 8.05, you're thinking, oh, he's teeing off at 8 o'clock in the morning. I can tell you now, that fella's getting out of bed at 5 o'clock, 5.30. Yeah. So he gets to, the, gets to get ready. Everyone leaves the house to get to the golf course. Lads do different things, different. Sit down, mark their balls, mark the holes. The caddy then marks where all the holes are. The lads get a pin position sheet. There's a full hour nearly of getting ready then. And then they do the range scenario. You go to driving range, you go to putting green, then you head for the first tee. Some lads have a 7.15 tee time. Now, you're then the next day. You know what you're like when you wake that early. Then you have the next day. You have all this waiting around time. Because now you have a 2.30 tee time. And I remember that at, at that tournament, that's what kind of happened to Shane on the Friday. And, it, and like, you talk about fitness level and all, you're out there in that heat, right on the Atlantic Ocean. And that's a tough course to walk, walk because it's very much a sand-based, sand everywhere. That's such a, that, that, I think that was the caddies rate of that as probably the hardest week of the year, I think. It's so hard on the caddies, like, yeah. as well. Because they're, they're, the yeah. they're doing the exact same system. Generally, that caddy is there before the player. So if the player's getting there two hours beforehand, the caddy's yeah. probably there just 10, 15 minutes before him. Like they are, now, there's caddies that are caddy fit. You look at a caddy and you go, he's overweight. But he's a seasoned caddy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. They, they are all... It's tough. It's tough, kind of. I, but it's so hard. The whole thing is, is so difficult. Why, don't they, why can't they have the, the buggy? I think it's just a routine. They just never had them. Like It's like golf carts and the... The, the carts, yeah. Does, they, it, does it upset the... A caddy would the, the, a caddy would the actually, course. A caddy would prefer not to have that. Do you mean actual like, the ride-on buggies to sit in the buggy or, or a golf cart? The, yeah, the cart. I don't think a caddy would prefer. I don't think it would be a whole lot of difference. Maybe just it would, but I think right. it's more, it's more aesthetics. Oh, you know? yeah, okay. They're not allowed to wear trousers. They wear shorts. Sometimes they have the boiler suits, but they, in general they wear shorts uh-huh. sometimes. Uh, Tiger made a comeback two weeks ago. What do you think uh, the future holds for him? I would say that win that I just spoke about would be, is a great incentive for him. With Phil winning at 50, yeah. the rival between them two, I he, he was He was saying that he will never play again, and then he yeah, was sure. back. He's not Tiger, I, isn't it? I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiger is like, I just want to get out, and then next I thing he's I said there's a very good chance Nike wrote that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They've already had the video want, made. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Bobby Jones, I think it was, was it Bobby? Ben Hogan or Bobby? Uh, sorry, Ben Hogan famously had a really bad car crash, and he came back and won a couple of majors after that. So you can tell already that Tiger is like looking at that sort of thing. What's Tiger at 12 and Nicholas is 16? No, 15 and 18. 15 and 18. Isn't 15. it? The fact that he'd be out there, but like, it's, he's so good for the game. They need him, but not yeah, that they yeah. need him is the wrong word, but like, he's but a you welcome. Need, you, you need characters. He's and a welcome to yeah. come back out there. With the race, with the racing as well, when the, like, the Ruby McCoy, when they all retired, totally. I was like, 
these were the guys that I followed when we were when we were dodging school to get to, go down to the bookies to watch sure. the racing or Mackay and we'd or dodging college or after school we always be down to the bookies yeah. and it was the it was the Mackay Gerhi Ruby Walsh you know you were there were your guys and then next thing they're all retired and it's yeah. like who's going to fill the void there's no real characters Rachel's great but and Ruby yeah. had a, you know, there's no yeah, but there's a new generation yeah, that come yeah, along yeah. younger but you, than you but and you I need, like, who don't Tiger remember Woods them is still, yeah. Yeah. whereas Tiger still is but the, I think the best thing about the Tiger is for the likes of the Shanes and the Seamus Powers and even the Rory's now they, they all started playing golf because of Tiger yeah. Tiger's 46 now so these lads were like you know, 10, 12 when Tiger yeah. was in his prime. Yeah. So for them, it's an amazing buzz. But they, they, they're not foolish. They're not, they're under no illusion. Tiger still like moves the, you know, moves the digits. Like he yeah. gets it up. Like yeah. he, they know him at a tournament is good for them as well. It gets them in it. But like you look at Shane there to play with Tiger for his first time ever. Turns out to be Augusta. So he plays his first two rounds in Augusta, which for me, I was like, personally for, I was like pissed, not pissed off. He got with Tiger. But you've got the whole circus around Tiger. Yeah, yeah. So Shane had to play his first two rounds with Tiger. And it didn't it show. Like, his first round, he was, I think he shot, like, one or two over or something. Or in a round up. But played really well. Played great the next day. And then ends up playing with him again on the Saturday. He's came away from Augusta. It's the ultimate high of playing with yeah. Tiger. But uh, for me, I was, like, hoping he was, no, like, yeah. pushing it to try win it or get into it. And the minute he got that draw, I think that's a difficult one for him mentally. But, like, he doesn't feel that way, obviously. But In other sports, what are we looking at? Are the, are the dubs going to... Take back Sam. What I think it's wide it? open. I, I personally think it's a lot more wide yeah. open. Like if you're giving Which me, is good for the game, like, yeah. isn't it? But if you're giving me your money now, I, like I'm putting it yeah. on Kerry all day, yeah. aren't you? You know. I think Moran, uh, David Moran got injured. But, uh, well, he got injured in the club yeah. game there with like yeah. Nancy against you. But I think like he is coming back on a mm. Kerry point of view. But I think I think Kerry badly need him to come yeah. back. Like in the midfield, they still need someone to fill that void. It, not, not a void. He, sorry. Yeah. How will they try to fill it if David leaves? I think he has. He definitely is another one in him anyway, another year. I'd be hard to see past them, but Dublin will probably feel a little fired up there now, feeling like the idea of coming back in. Like the Paul Mannion thing, Jack McCarthy, Cluxton and all, put yeah, all that to bed. To, yeah. But the lads are not coming back, they're not coming back. Move on. There's, this is yeah, Dublin. Yeah. You're giving out about their finances and their population for years. Well, where's the pop? Let's the population play now. There's definitely the element of trying to get the, you know, get, get another one for the James McCarthy's of the world and stuff like that. These lads are still have the appetite yeah. for it. But credit to Tyrone as well, like you know what I mean. They, yeah. they, like I always felt that the one the Dublin won in eleven, you know, getting over the line and that definitely was the difference in them kicking on. But I'd say the Monaghans and the Donegals and all must be looking at that too, thinking that could have been us. Yeah, they just that could have been us. Mm. You know, like that was the, like to put the boot in and carry for the crack here. Like that was the All Ireland carry were supposed to win. Like yeah. they win the handy ones, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but. Kerry definitely would be kicking themselves, and and I think it's harshly a bit on it. Kerry yeah. and Tyrone semi final yeah. was a great great semi final, yeah. like and credit to Tyrone for beating Kerry to get over the line there, and unfortunately for Mayo, they just the, the final again just didn't show up for them. But I think it's anyone's. Yeah. I really do. Any of them teams that we named there, they'll all take belief in it mm-hmm. from seeing you know them beaten. We're going to have a big day Easter Sunday in April. We're going to have Sligo, uh, Sligo in town to play in New York, and of course uh, Johnny McGinney is the new manager there. The overall structure of the development squads is very encouraging. Um, and Johnny McGinney is after taking over. So Johnny went back to back. He was manager, kind of co-manager uh, with Mikey Brosnan there the last uh, two years when they went back to back senior New York counties and a lot of the, with all American born players. And a lot of them now would be getting on the New York team. And it would be great to, um, it'd be, great to be competitive in that game anyway, yeah. even though like Sligo, of course, would be hot favourites. New York have been in the championship since 1999 and they've never won, n- never won an opening game. So we're, I, I'd say... They've, they've come so close in a few of them. Like yeah. Even, even Mayo and Roscommon there in recent yeah. years nearly got caught out like yeah. years ago, but like Roscommon and Leitrim. Leitrim. But now it must be a thing. Nobody wants to be the team that they beat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and obviously Leitrim and Sligo are the two teams that would be more. But I think that goes like against... That, yeah. I think that goes against New York. Because if you remember the last time Sligo were out here, Sligo hammered them. Yeah. Sligo done more of a number on them than the others. <laughs> the Galways or the Mayos. Yeah. Um, and then the reports are coming out that, do, what do you think of this transfer talk within the GAA, like young Spillane? Oh, yeah. Potentially Sligo, going yeah. playing for Sligo. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. I don't know how it all works. Like I didn't know if it's as straightforward. His, m- uh, his mother is from Sligo, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. All right, well, it'd know? be great for New York yeah. because 
<laughs> to be fair to all them teams. It'd be great for it to go ahead, of course, because it hasn't gone. We haven't had it in the last two years. Yeah, but it'd be great because they all do. I know Mayo are obviously always to come out in force. It's always great. Yeah. There's so many people from Mayo here, but it's a massive Sligo community yeah. here. As of course, well. Cahill's from Sligo. Cahill's from Sligo. Cahill's already about. They're all was already about it. That's how I knew. Like all his family uh, and all. Are, they're, are they're, they all going to come out? Yeah. Yeah. They're all the milestones you see for COVID that we need to. We need all them to reopen again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? As you say. That 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 count that championship game is so good for New York. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It really is. Like the buzz it does have around town. Like, it'll be great. And we might, we might do something. When is that? Uh, Easter Sunday. Easter be great. Sunday. We might do something leading up to because we're like when we started off the podcast, we wanted to kind of give a bit of an exposure to the mm. whole New York team. And well, th- we're giving a shout out to Tommy Rooney from off the ball. Like Tommy's here. Yeah. To, Tommy's here that week. Like oh really? But so he said he's going to come on the podcast, but he, said okay. he doesn't necessarily want to do uh, work related as in regards to the championship stuff while he's here. Tommy but with he, off the ball, but he wants to come on. But he like obviously him and um, yeah. Andy Moran and um, yeah yeah of course. Uh, yeah. Who's the other one? Oh Paddy, of course. Paddy Andrews. The lads have yeah. the uh, football podcast. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. So he's happy to come on. I told him to bring the wolf with him, like bring Paddy over with him, because uh, Paddy and Andy would uh, get them over to New York, and we could do it from here. But um, yeah, I hope it is because that is one of those ones. It's such a great week yeah. in New York, no matter who's in it. And so, like this year, I think they're looking after the. So New York are also putting in a junior team into. So they've restructured the junior championship back home. You uh, uh, traditionally, typically, it used to be. Uh, Cork and Kerry used to be competitive. They used to have strong junior teams, but they've ditched them now. It's going to be more of a kind of a, like a global. Uh, New York are putting in a junior team to play in the championship. So it's going to be a lot of guys who are going to be playing on the, the college's team in a couple of weeks under Graham that are going to be playing on that team. The good thing about that is, is that they're going to train with the New York seniors. So what was always the problem with New York going, uh, historically, they couldn't get games. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was involved two years ago, three years ago, and even to try and get a game when you have a pad and a 30. You're always going to have 10 fellas, 7 or 8 fellas who are going to be niggling, have niggling injuries. Like, so they're going to have a big squad there. But the New York seniors are also going to take a trip home to Ireland to play in that competition, the Tintin Cup, in June. So there's going to be two championship games for the New York seniors this year. They're at That's least brilliant. minimum. That's if they don't beat Stigo. So they're going to play Stigo. If they win, they go to the next one. If they lose, they're going to be going back then in June to Ireland. So it'll be great. It's going to be that yeah, is yeah. So they're, they're obviously looking for that backdoor fixture. So that's their backdoor fixture. So it'll be great yeah. for. I was a bit surprised. Uh, the amount of the, col- the, the, the college kids, first generation, have never been to Ireland. Like, oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of surprised yeah. me. You know yeah. what I mean? But again, it's different times. Like yeah, you never yeah. know. Like yeah, yeah. It mightn't have been just a thing to do. Like yeah, you, know, you would have thought like. Go on home there for the summer, you little bollocks. <laughs> Get out from under the feet for me. <laughs> that would have been a common yeah. thing. But like. We don't know the kids' names, so I'm not saying that in our yeah. school here. But when you think, a lot of these parents could have been illegal, like yeah. you know, and that was a big factor oh, being yeah, documented yeah, yeah, over yeah. the years. So there wasn't an appetite for the kids to be brought home. Their parents could, couldn't, couldn't go. go. So oh they, yeah, okay. So yeah. that could, I was I didn't want to ask the lads that because yeah. that's, I did, don't know if that would, but I just thought it was a bit strange, like you know. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Going home, that like was it the could, case, so that yeah. could have been the oh, case for a lot of them, yeah. you know. Never had the appetite to go to Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Now, if like, hopefully it'll go ahead. Like, I, I don't see it not going ahead. Like, but they didn't have any kind of continuity the last two or three years because it was cancelled. So a new management structure there now, and Paddy's doing great work there with, with with the lads. So like, things are kind of, things are kind of looking good for the great pull yeah. for them to get Green Bear to. Ah, oh, fantastic! Jeez, what that was pull. some cool. Oh, so, but Jeez. it's great buzz for the kids. I know yeah. the lads were probably looking and didn't know who yeah. he was initially or something. Yeah, you can sure do, Paddy we, said it to you me. You sure they know uh, now, like who Paddy, he is. Yeah, he's on the phone to me last night, and he was like, uh, when Garrity was out in t- for Thanksgiving, he did a session. The lads were like, so like as we said, Garrity was listening to Sam, and they probably even weren't sure, even yeah, born yeah. So Paddy was saying they obviously went away, and they, that's what I'm they, saying. They did their on homework. YouTube, and they're like, can you imagine some of them even going home yeah. to their ho- to yeah. their parents or to their dad yeah. or their uncles? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're getting changed by yeah, Green Garrity from the like, you know, me. And the dad's like, look, Green Garrity, like, but it is such a great buzz for them. Ah, it's huge. But these things are lift everywhere like I spoke to Tomas there over the Christmas like and he was talking about Offaly like you know what I mean and the things that they're doing there yeah. and I said just the buzz around that under 20s yeah. team like but look, where they're going but looking at Tomas like I remember when Tomas came into the Nemo panel with us and uh, if you did something right the Tomas, lift. Tomas was in the half back lane and if I did yeah. something with well, on dogs, he, he just give you the wink like that. I yeah. Go, oh, jeez, it's Tomas O'Shea saying, sure. saying that to yeah. me. And can you imagine being a young kid yeah. there from Offaly yeah, and coming yeah. off the yeah. under 20s thing you're on this high, you're, you know, cock of the walk around Offaly, and now all of a sudden you're in, you're getting brought into the senior panel. Like, a lot of the under-20 lads play today in the Auburn Cup. Like, yeah. that's like that experience yeah. or that for, you know, you have John Martin there and you have a yeah. Tommaso Shea and you have this boost. Yeah. It's, it's amazing it's, how these things 
the opposite effect can be like how did me go from the heights that they were at in yeah. the 90s and all and then you take out a Sean Boyle and you don't if you don't have the next thing in place to keep but it's I'm not saying it's easy yeah you look you look at Manchester United these things are hard how do you keep that that's why yeah. you admire like Kilkenny to still be kind of eating yeah. at that top table type of thing yeah they haven't won but they're there they're thereabouts in a small county type of thing but for these lads who like I come from Nemo look we're a successful club and we always had generations of Denny Adams Billy Morgans Stephen O'Brien's and like you've always someone to look up for they're in the club or they're in the club throughout your whole these guys are kind of like first generation of their club really yeah. when you when you think about it like and then so they've no one to kind of come in and kind of uh, give advice or look up to I remember when we went count these last couple of years before I came out here like Colin Cockery was in the backroom staff Stephen O'Brien was manager Colin showing you how to kick a ball over the bar like this is the this is one of the best kick, kickers yeah, of a yeah. ball ever and he's yeah. showing you how to kick a ball over the bar like yeah. week in week out and what, what his tricks were and how yeah. and how he did it Joe Joe Cameron as well oh, he, he, his little uh, little training regimen so like it's going to be huge for them I'd, 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 I'd love to go up and be a uh, third eye or eye in the wall yeah. to see what, see what kind of training he, he's doing with them. he's yeah. probably running them around probably, <laughs> running yeah. the legs off them I'd say yeah. I see you mentioned Nemo there um Robbie O'Dwyer was, which is there, wasn't he? Mikko's son, he's gone yeah, to yeah. Clamell commercials. He's gone uh, coaching a club team up there in Clamell. Wow, and Robbie was great. During the recession there, he learned how to do masseuse. He's a qualified masseuse as well. Oh, like, brilliant. Uh, Robbie, yeah. you get in the rub off Robbie. Like, Cause it was he's great. with the bank. Or, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Bank, but he yeah. was... Oh, he was great crack. You've been out to, you've been oh, stitches going out to play. Dangsy, Dang you're in again, yeah? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Oh, you're like, oh, oh, the lads are great. I'd be good friends with John and his brother, like, and they're just... They're, oh, that's they're, a huge they're, job. They're they broke characters. our hearts in 2015, 2016. That's right. I read that in the thing that they beat you in the final. Yeah, they're so... It's a, ah, yeah, for Tipperary, yeah. like, obviously, they're not a big football and camp, but they're yeah. commercials, commercials are very yeah. good, yeah. 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 It's a yeah. big job for Robbie, yeah. They're yeah. looking... Ah, fair play to him. Yeah. Who's gone in with him? I've seen it there. Oh, it's uh, John Cronin, I think, from, uh, from Waterville. He's oh, right, okay. Ah. They're looking for a physio if you want to go into the... Why you, Santi, my dear Annie. And that's all for this week. Let us know what you think by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Long Haul Podcast or visit our website, thelonghaulpodcast.com where you can check out our big interview with Mead football legend Graham Garrity when he was inside in the Long Haul last month to discuss the New York Colleges travelling home to Ireland to play in the Carna McLean Cup which is coming up next week. Thanks for listening. And Slán Gafol. To me, why you Santi, my dear Annie? Oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka?